for the past couple months now. We have fielded a ton of questions about where is Bianca? Where is Michael? In all of our videos or comments, we get messages. We've been getting a lot. And a lot of people have been asking us a lot of things. And yes, it's true, as many of you realize, that we're no longer together. We're only making it public because it's just getting so difficult for us because we don't want to have to tell our friends or you know those who watch our, our videos um, excuses all the time. We, we try not to do any lying. We don't want to lie. That's the last thing in the world we want to do. And so if somebody says, where's Bianca? Are you guys still together? We would just ignore the second part of that and just say, well, Bianca is a dance or Bianca is a JCI, something that was true to get around it because, well, again, we don't want to to be lying about anything. Yeah, it, it just feels horrible to be able to not be able to just tell the truth and explain. But obviously it's nobody's business up into a point where something is going to drastically change the content that they're going to receive. And so we had to be sure before we made these type of videos. And uh, so it's been a couple months that we've been dealing with this kind of thing. Um, that being said though, I'm sorry to any of those who are looking for the major drama, something really juicy. You're not going to find that here. Truth be told, we're still very, very good friends. Very, very good friends. Get along every single day without any problems. Now, obviously, this is a decision that we didn't come to lightly or quickly. And we've had ups and downs, you know, for the past several months, struggling with the situation that we have now. And to really have a good understanding, you have to understand the beginning of us. So Bianca and I uh, started dating prior to the pandemic, but not long before the pandemic. And I was moving into a new condo and everything, so we'd already been dating, things were going well. And I invited her to live with me because she lived in a pretty darn far city. It was like a two hour drive to go visit her every time. I worked long hours. It just made more sense to just say, come, come and live in here. And, you know, everything went great. We went on a trip to Mexico, actually, just before the pandemic. We got back maybe two weeks prior to that. We had an amazing time, real blast. And we grew very, very close, spending that much time together. And then two weeks after Mexico, well, the lockdown came. And we had a very small, <laughs> small studio condo. And we first part of the lockdown, I don't remember how long that was, six months, something like that. You weren't allowed to go out of your house except for one person could go to the grocery, do the grocery shopping, that kind of thing. You weren't even allowed to go for walks, at least for the first part of it. And during that time, we spent a lot of time together because it's a studio. There's no separate bedroom where you can hide from each other or anything. And we cut along perfectly well. Everything seemed to align with us perfectly well. And so, when we finally decided, you know what, done with the Western world, done with the materialistic sort of things, we're gonna go and you know move to the Philippines because she was half Filipino, we could get citizenship there. Otherwise it would have been like South America where I had spent many years just taking vacations there, just escaping, you know, saving all my money just to take vacations in the South because I really honestly hate winter. And I love the slower, life that I'm manana, tomorrow, tomorrow, that sort of thing. And the sense of urgency seemed to just disappear and people had a lot less stress in their lives. Uh, but Philippines made more sense for the fact that she could get, you know, citizenship and everything. And so we made a plan, you know, one year we're going to move. We're going to sell everything. We're going to plan everything. We're going to give my notice at work, everything, save as much as we possibly can, pay off all our debts and move to the Philippines. Once you make a plan like that, <clears throat> The longer it takes, the more, I don't know, in a hurry and a rush you are to go and put that plan into action. Um, you know, for myself, I, I had been working since I was a teenager and now I was like 46 years old. So uh, I had worked like 30 years at this point at a very high stress level type jobs that uh, oh, I just couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to get out of it. And yeah, so we ended up leaving a lot sooner when we realized that Things aren't going to get better anytime soon. Let's get out of here. 
we figured it out to a point where at least we paid off everything. We had a little bit left. Let's go. We're going to go and just figure out life as we go and took a big chance, took a risk, you know, a risk in life. And, you know, if you want exciting things in your life, you got to just go for it. Sometimes, you know, planning everything means you'll never actually accomplish anything. And soon as they allowed weddings again, which keep in mind, we were married outdoors in the winter with only one witness allowed each. And that was it. You weren't allowed to have family, nothing, no, nothing. And so as soon as they allowed that, we was like, OK, we signed up for it and we got married right away. Um, obviously for legal reasons too it would be very important long term with her getting citizenship and stuff like that but like i said we just spent a ridiculous amount of time locked in the same room and really really got along very well and felt like everything was aligned so first we had to go to cambodia we thought we'd hide out there until uh, philippines opened we thought okay any time now it's going to open but then cambodia immediately started locking down delta was the next one coming through as you all know and we had to get out of Cambodia. We went to one of the only countries in the world you could go to at the time um, without any restrictions or anything, and that was Albania. There was a few others, but Albania was really easy to get there and it had a very low cost of living. And we, well, didn't expect it to last that long, but we lived there for a full year. Highly recommend Albania, it is a wonderful place. Just by Greece, beautiful place. But once the Philippines opened up, uh, we were already making plans. I think it was, it took us a month and a half or two months just to figure things out because we bought things in Albania. We kind of felt like this is going to be a few years. So we purchased some things. I opened a business there and everything. There was a lot of stuff we had to shut down, get rid of, close out the business, which takes, there's a process to do that kind of thing. And we got out of there and we came to the Philippines super excited. You know, we did some travel through Luzon and stuff like that, but then quickly realized we don't like carrying our whole lives that we had taken with us in these suitcases. We needed a home base. And we just seen all these vlogs about Boracay. We gotta go to Boracay. Oh my God, it looks so beautiful there. From there, we can travel all over. And so we went to Boracay and eventually found a place to live. And things went really well. We continue to thrive really well as a couple in Boracay and everything, you know, went really good. I, I can't complain, we had a great time. Um, but then after eight months of being on that island with no city and just the limitations of living on an island like that, um, we decided that we needed to move and we found Iloilo by accident, as you all probably already know, and fell in love with the city. It was an amazing city with everything we could possibly ask for. Our long-term planning for the longest time now that I could remember was that when her mother retires, her mother wanted a small little farm. We kind of wanted that sort of life. We wanted to be near a city that we can get all the things we need but could go in and out quite easily. And we could have a plot of land where one corner her mother could have her little farm. When I say farm, I mean one of a few different animals. So she just has something to do, loves animals, but not a real farm. Not a commercial farm or anything, but somewhere where she can relax and just enjoy her life. And then we would have something similar on the same property. That was kind of our aligned goals for the longest time. But then once we came to Iloilo, well, um, those opportunities that open up from being in Iloilo really kind of started to change our dynamic, to be very honest. We just started to diverge in different directions. Um, and we began to see our goals and dreams and hopes and that kind of thing a little differently. Um, and that meant we were slowly starting to diverge away from each other into different directions. Now, keep in mind, it's, it's not a bad thing to realize that you have the potential to do more out of life. You know, have your distant dreams that you thought were unattainable all of a sudden become possible when you never even, you, you know, you always discounted it as, yeah, but you know, that will never happen, that sort of thing. And that's what makes this whole thing hard. Because and when you're in a relationship, you always want your partner to achieve and to get the goals and happiness and everything they want out of life. Um, you want to think and want, you want to want those things for your partner, right? So if your partner wants to be a, the greatest musician of all times, you want to support your partner and you want them to be there and be with them to do that, but not after you've kind of already set your goals somewhere else sort of thing. Um, and that's where it can get quite difficult. So you're drawn into, yeah, but I want this type of life and yeah, but they want that kind of life. 
and it can become a problem, but it's nobody's fault. And, well, that's where things began to fall apart. We just began to realize that we had different ambitions and really neither of us wanted to give up our own ambitions and goals in order for the other one to have their ambitions and goals. And I'm going to be honest, like, I don't think relationships will last very long if um, one person spends the rest of their life secretly despising the other person for stopping them from reaching the goals and ambitions that they wanted out of life, even though they may just agree to it and suck it up and just go, okay, well, I'll follow your dream. They will always probably have that in the back of their brain and it may always chip away at your relationship and it eventually might blow up. And so I'm not sure it's possible to give up on all of your dreams just because your partner has a different idea of what they want out of life. And so I'm sure you've heard this saying before, Sometimes, if you love someone, you have to let them go. You have to let them go flourish and be the best that they could be and let them get everything they want out of life. You only have this one life on earth. And so, yeah, if you love them, you got to let them go, as they say. So, like I said, there's nothing juicy here for anybody. There's no big drama or anything. It's just two people that started to grow apart from each other. It doesn't happen quickly, so you don't notice it at first, but you just eventually diverge and your paths end up in two different directions and you're not pulling for the exact same things anymore. I know 100% that Bianca will do amazing things in this world. She's gonna become you know, somebody famous, guaranteed. She already kinda is, right? Locally. And uh, I really hope that she'll be able to attain all her goals in life and I will always be there to cheer her on as her friend. So, what does that mean? What does that mean for the YouTube channels, that kind of thing? Um, well, we've decided that obviously I'm taking on this new channel here and starting from, well, essentially it was from scratch, but we're doing it for a month now. So thank you very much for those who have supported and uh, subscribed and all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. It was called That's So Interesting, um, but I did get the, that Philippines name from that one. And that one will be more aligned with her brand, that Be Akin brand that she already had started to build up. She already has a Facebook, she already has Instagram, she has a Twitch channel. She has another YouTube for gaming, all under that Be Akin, Bianca type thing. And so that brand was already kind of around her. Um, where that Philippines life was something we already have another separate brand on. But I wanted to make sure that obviously her channel um, would be harder to build up when it's a niche, that kind of thing. And uh, where a travel type channel or about the life of the Philippines, that kind of thing would be a little easier to start. Um, so it made more sense for me to start with a new one, grow from there and have her uh, start with the established channel that already kind of got used to all of her hobbies and interests and things like that. And clearly it starts her off um, very secure going forward. And to me, that's, that's important. I wanted to make sure that she was secure going forward with uh, everything she's gonna need to get her life started again. Our lease is coming, as you know, to an end. Uh, it's a few months, it's like May 11th technically, but our last rent uh, to be paid will be March 1st. Um, and then I'll be heading out to kind of explore. Um, I might just go throughout the whole country on bus and boat and see where it takes me. Something low cost where I don't have a cost of living somewhere else. That kind of thing, maybe. I'm not sure. We'll have to see how this all goes um, in order to you know, build up enough so I can live and explore and that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, and then on the other side, you're gonna have Bianca is going to be extremely busy. She continues to be busy, right? She's active doing JCI, modeling, cosplay, all kinds of great things that she's gonna, well, she'll go into more detail with it when she makes her video like this. She doesn't make videos as quick as me and as fast as me and as many as me. So be patient. She will eventually uh, be making her own type of video like this. Um, but uh, because I'm making so many of the videos, I'm getting the majority of the questions where you decided, okay, January 1st, we're, we're gonna finally come clean and stop having to make excuses all the time. And even though I'm gonna be traveling all over the place, um, I absolutely love Iluilo, just to be very clear. Made so many amazing close friends here that I doubt I'm gonna stay away or anything like that. Um, you're gonna see me around. No matter what, you're gonna see me around. Even if I move just 
a provincial town nearby or something, I will still be here in Iloilo because it is a beautiful and amazing place. Um, and also, like, at the end of the day, uh, we want to make sure that with all these friends that we've made and everything that we don't want it to be awkward for any of them. You can invite us both. We both get along very, very well. We're very good friends and we can both be in the same room. Everything's going to be cool and there'll be nothing, no awkwardness or anything between us. It's a great thing about not having, you know, anything big and negative in your, in between each other like this. It's just, uh, both realizing that we were going different ways. Now I know there's going to be people out there that are going to say, whoa, 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 there's no divorce in the Philippines. What are you going to do? We've never registered our, our marriage here in the Philippines. We're still under the tourist visa. She's getting her visa next uh, month or this month. It's January already. She's going to be going for her dual citizenship, that kind of thing. So she can just file a separate and then and not have to worry about putting in the uh, marriage certificate. So there's no worries about that. It's all under Canadian law. We were married in Canada. Essentially, Canadian law is one year separated. After that, you can just apply for a divorce online. Yes, it's that easy, apparently. I did not know that until I recently uh, was told by somebody else and looked it up. Sure enough, you can apply online now. When you don't have any kids or anything between you, it's no big deal. So, yeah, yeah, there you go. We can get divorced. It's, it's a year process, and who knows? Maybe something might change in a year, but let's leave it at just the way I just said it, I guess. Um, you know, and I hate that we have to make a video like this, to be honest, but obviously it's impossible. You can't be public forward like this with videos and stuff like that and then just not tell anybody anything. It, it, it just confusing people like crazy. So I had to make some kind of video, but this will be other than she's going to make her own video on This will be the end of it. I'm not going to talk about it. If you join me in lives, I'm not going to, like I said, there's no drama, so there's not going to be any more talk about this. It'll be the one time you will hear about it from us. Um, you know, and to be honest, I'm, I'm just relieved to be able to finally tell you and live out in the open and not have to come up with all these excuses and everything about why Bianca is not in a video or something like that. And now we can get back to just focusing on the journey, you know, that is, you know, that Philippines life, you know, what does it take? You know, what, what do things cost out here? Where's all the cool places? Where's the, the best places to live? Where's the best beaches? Whatever. All the stuff that I really, really enjoy exploring, I can get back to doing and uh, not worry about all, anything like this. Uh, well, if I go, people are gonna ask, where's Bianca? That kind of thing. So the journey's gonna actually start tomorrow morning um, where I'm heading off to Bacolod and then I'm gonna travel around that island there. I don't know yet. It's gonna be literally exploring after Bacolod for 24 hours. I don't know anything after that. I'm just going to wing it and go for it. Week after that, heading back to Rojas because I'd already made plans with that. And there'll be other things. I'll go to Manila and just go, you know, just go and figure it out. Take buses, do whatever, wherever my heart takes me sort of thing. And uh, just coming back here, like I said, we're still here in the same lease for several months now, but I can spend those next several months building up the channel, but also figuring out where I'm going to end up living after this. I think that's it. Yeah, I can't think of anything else offhand. Um, but yeah, so thank you for joining and thank you for sticking through. And I hope, you know, you know, everybody's okay with it. Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're okay with it. Let's be honest. It, it is or it isn't. Uh, I know there'll be people that'll want to follow this channel and that channel. Some will only want to follow her channel, whatever it is. Thank you for joining in the journey so far. And uh, yeah, I hope everybody has a fantastic 2024 and we'll see you all another time soon. Thank you. Look at this. I finally, finally, finally got the opportunity to rent this bad boy. He, it is always busy. It's always crazy. And we have a lot of stuff going on right now because of uh, Christmas. There's so much stuff going on this week that I was like, okay, wait a minute. I, I might as well just do this for the convenience. Don't get stuck in some